Greetings and welcome to the Adeptus Artorum YouTube channel. I'm your host for this video, Kairos Retinue, and today I aim to cover a topic that's been suggested to me as subject matter for a 40k law video for a rather long time. Both myself and Adeptus Artorum have scrolled through your comments and tried our best to pick out the most interesting and least frequently covered topics that have been suggested. And rest assured, we aim to cover as many of these suggestions as possible, so thank you to anyone who takes part in that process. Creating conversation, discussion and intrigue surrounding the 40k law is what this channel is all about. If you are new to the channel, don't worry, there will be plenty of time in the future for you to make suggestions of your own. Okay, so without further ado, let's delve into today's video topic, the horrifyingly mutated servants of the dark gods known simply throughout the universe as the Warp Talons. Now, to understand what a warp talon is, we must first approach the subject of this creature's lesser corrupted counterpart, the Chaos Space Marine Raptor. Now, Chaos Space Marine Raptors are known throughout the universe as a sort of stalwart assault infantry to the numerous Chaos Space Marine legions. The tales of fear and dismay surrounding them serves as an egotistical statement within their own minds, leading them to believe that they are the unquestioned elite amongst the various other standard of marines within their legions. Now, clearly the Astartes within the ranks of the Raptors are extremely selfish and arrogant, and in my personal opinion this makes a lot of sense when you delve into the foundation of their creation. Before the taints of chaos had touched these marines, the raptors were in fact highly demanded and extremely rare imperial space marines, equipped with the very highly valued space marine jump packs. The Warmaster Horus had devised that these Astartes were a critical tool, and it was proven to be correct, as these assault marine squads made up of the jump pack troopers would be the turning point in many crucial conflict outcomes. Horus made sure that each of these troops had profession-specific training in which they were taught the value of surprise attack and each marine was indoctrinated into a mindset of picking off the weak. This, however, would unfortunately be the foundation of their susceptibility to chaos. Flying through the air at high speeds, throwing themselves at weakened prey became a rather exhilarating and addicting lifestyle. Wielding such advanced and revered technology had always been a factor that had given jump pack troops an extreme sense of superiority and self-importance. Their tactical preferences of hitting the enemy lines where it was weakest is very comparable to the way the animals hunted on ancient terror, though preferred for a thrill, I'd assume, as opposed to survival. The jump pack troops would be held in reserve until the enemy had exposed a weakness within their battle formations, wherein these jump pack troops would plummet out of the heavens and utterly shatter the remaining defences. The assault companies that would eventually side with the War Master when the Horus Heresy was upon them would eventually venture with the Primarch into the Eye of Terror. Here, they would grow to love the thrill of fight and flight, let's call it, a little too much. And as the dark and ruinous powers of chaos took hold of these susceptible marines, the rudimentary machine spirits within their jump packs became corrupt and essentially wielded the marines and their war gear together. These new abominations had high octane fuel running through their veins and war gear alike. Their senses heightened and their predatory instincts were essentially reflected back onto them by the warp itself until they became the very vision of a perfect predator. Their chaos-tainted power armor, usually mimicking the appearance of a vicious bird of prey or a terrifying demon, 
Altered Voxcasters are sealed to the exterior of their helmets, amplifying their vicious cries and sending their enemies into fits of fear and cowardice before they eventually annihilate them. This is a massively important factor to the raptors and cannot be stated enough. Raptors don't wish to simply kill their enemies. Oh no, 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 no. That wouldn't feed their superiority complex at all. They will instead go to great, great lengths to instill fear into their foes' very souls. They will broadcast ghostly voices and vicious threats throughout any and all communication systems in the area. The skies will fill with visions of demonic faces and enough of this and the enemy will descend into madness. The raptors will skulk in to tear them apart as they wallow in their own fear and self-pity. This action is swift and merciless, yet will hold no second thought to them, as the concept of mercy, even before the raptors fall to chaos, was never applied to their thought process. In fact, quite the opposite. It is said that there is no battle line to exist within the Imperium that cannot be shattered by a pack of Chaos Space Marine Raptors. But it is fair to know that Raptors will literally never attack their prey until it is within its most vulnerable moments. Simply putting it, they can't really be beaten because when they attack, you already had lost the conflict long ago. And they're just there to essentially sweep up the scraps. You will already be demoralized, tired, and likely injured from the fray up until this point, and in that fact alone, the raptors gain encouragement to enact cruel and unthinkable deeds upon you. Okay, so I guess to those of us who don't really know and who are wondering where do the raptors fit into the history of the warp talons, well, much like the changes seen in the assault squad troops that would subsequently change into the raptors, the warp talons are in fact a direct result of raptors who have endured extremely long exposure to the immaterium, which in turn has further corrupted their form. Once a raptor has become what could be categorised as a warp talon, he is then at the point of no return, and his future in this state is definitive. In this state, they have followed the path of the predator for far too long, and their minds can literally no longer fathom any other concepts other than tearing other living creatures apart. Within their minds is a shared singular fixation on slashing and cutting their foes. This has been woven into the very fabric of their being, as now, where they once had hands and feet, they now had blades that were sharp enough to cut through the very fabric of reality. This is again another thing that can not be understated enough. The sharpness of these blades cannot be comprehended by any race's smiths. They are an enigma of terrifying deadliness and they essentially serve as both weapons and transport for these horrifying creatures. When the song of war is sung and battles are fought throughout the universe, warp talons are attracted to the echoes of anguish and pain that ripples throughout the warp from those moments. The talons are able to use their acute senses to fixate within the warp and single out the echoes. Once they have closed in on an echo, they begin to essentially see a reflection of their victim's spirit and mental state. At this location, the talons begin waving their bladed hands in the air, tearing a hole into the very fabric between both the warp and materium. They then force their way through the wound they have created and into real space, appearing before their selected prey as if by magic. The bright and energised appearance of the talons is more than enough to disorientate the victims, and within this moment the talons take complete and utter advantage and begin to attack the moment that they appear. 
It's fair to note that these wounds that the Talons create by waving their hands around in the air in the warp and cutting holes in the fabric of reality do in fact disappear the moment that the Talons arrive in real space. Now, one thing I find interesting is the way that even fellow Chaos Space Marines refer to the Talons almost as though they're an uncontrollable animal. And that is, of course, because by this stage, they essentially have become just that. The Warp Talon's mind has been devolved to such a degree that they have literally become a demonic bird of prey of sorts. It is suggested that you don't employ War Talons, you simply set them upon their prey. Now, very similar to how you would with a dog, Talons are given a personal possession belonging to or related to their prey, which, with their heightened abilities, they then use to create the mind reflection in the warp that we mentioned previously. And then they follow on to use the aforementioned methods to execute and decapitate their foes in real space. If Talons are not focused towards prey, they seem to become generally lost, confused and without purpose, crawling around awkwardly on all fours like flightless birds or hanging lifelessly from the ceiling like bats yearning to be in flight hunting for prey. Talons also no longer have any understanding of language and instead make hideous screeches to one another in order to communicate. This communication method is alien even to other servants of chaos. Within the bounds of the Imperium, the Ordo Malleus have attempted to categorise the warp talons in their own baffled way in an attempt to understand them. And they constantly try to uncover ways in which the terrifying aspects of the radiated dread could possibly be countered in a battlefield scenario. The likes of the Astra Militarum, if we're talking about humans, are completely defenceless in the face of the fear that these creatures emit. Just imagine for a second what it is that scares you most, and then multiply that by ten. That is how the men of the Imperial Guard will feel in the presence of these creatures, wishing they were somewhere else, anywhere else, just not there. It's also fair to note that Warp Talons are very unspecific in legionary servitude preference, though for obvious reasons, uh, many of these Talons felt as though that they belonged with the Night Lord's Legion and under the influence of Chaos Undivided. It is known, however, that there are Warp Talons within the ranks of almost every Chaos Space Marine Legion, devoted to every Chaos God. Warp Talons that worship Khorne, for example, are described as blood-soaked executioners in a frenzy springing forth from the Warp as perfect examples of their Lord's bloodlust. Those of them who worship Slanesh behave with slow and agonizing precision, creating maximum torment and pain and feeding from it for their own pleasure. Talons that follow Zinch channel raw warp energy from within the Immaterium, making them virtually invulnerable in combat and the warp talons of Nurgle are bloated and diseased carrion birds that enjoy toying with their nearly dead prey before they kill them, almost like a vulture of sorts. It is unknown specifically which chaos god is at the base of the creation of warp talons. It's just simply a fact that's impossible to determine. However, it is known that regardless of the gods that they follow, they have never been seen in packs bigger than nine. I'll assume that that's a factor of their rarity within the Imperium before their fall to the Chaos Gods. Either way, to have such a devastating effect on a planet within such a vastly overpopulated universe as 40k in packs of just nine really helps to lend some perspective to just how terrifying warp talons must really be when you're in their presence. In conclusion to my understanding of Warp Talons, these creatures make a formidable foe for even the mightiest of beings that exist within the grim darkness of the far future, and are not to be underestimated under any circumstances. 
that make a terrifying addition to any Chaos fighting force and exist only to kill. As a closing statement, I will say this with no agenda nor understanding of anything except decapitation, mutilation and the joy that it brings them. The Warp Talons exist as one of the foulest fates within the whole Warhammer 40,000 universe. Alright guys, it's sadly come to that time again where I must leave you. And though I would traditionally leave you guys with a quote, this time I just basically can't, simply due to the minimal discussions in law where warp talons are discussed by those who can actually speak. And as we well know, we couldn't even begin to fathom a direct quote from a warp talon. So, with that said, I can only apologise for that. Once again, Thank you for watching the Adeptus Artorum YouTube channel. This has been a relatively short video on warp talons within the 40k universe. If you feel like there's anything I've missed or you just want to suggest a new topic for me to cover, don't hesitate to pop it in the comments below. If you're new to the channel and you wish to stay up to date with any future content, be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like with the button below. Once again, guys, I've been your host for this video, Karos Retinue, and I thank you guys, as always, for watching.